Welcome to another episode of Discussions by Domain. I am your host, Anthony DeGraw, Director of Partnerships at Domain Computer Services. Uh, today, we are welcoming Alex Mellon, the co-founder of Smart Sites. They are an award-winning digital marketing agency based out of Paramus, New Jersey. They are a fellow Inc. 5000 uh, award winner, as well as a premier Google partner and top 250 in NJ Biz. Alex, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Good to be here. So Alex, real quick, before we get into the topic of today, which is all the data that you've amassed in the post or current COVID world, who's okay. winning, who's losing, what are the trends you guys are seeing and how you're helping your customers? I always like to start with a random question so people can get to know you a little bit better. Uh, this question's about your morning routine. Do you have one? If so, what does it look like? And, uh, <laughs> you know, what, what's it about? Yeah, good question. Good question. Um, I, I don't really have one. You know, it's tough. I, I have two small kids. So I think my mo morning routine revolves around their routine. Um, before school started, it was uh, it was a different routine than now that we're trying to get to back. It's back to virtual school for now. And then a week and a half, it's supposed to switch again and be in person school. So it's all uh, my routine is all controlled by their routine for the time being. <laughs> Agreed. That, that's exactly what mine sounds like. The two little <laughs> ones running around yeah. and remote learning and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> it changes constantly is what I yes. like to say. <laughs> awesome. So Alex is going to jump into a presentation uh, that he has done just five days ago on industry winners and losers in a post-COVID world. He has a ton of data that he's amassed, and I think it's going to be very valuable for our audience to understand what people are doing. And uh, it's actually funny that I, there's a book out there, and I'm forgetting the name off the top of my head, but I think it's called Everybody Lies. And it's a book about uh, Google search trends and people will say they're doing one thing, but then when you look at what people are actually searching and doing in the online world, it shows something completely different. So Alex is going to run us through this presentation. He's going to share his screen and uh, hopefully we can share this with everybody afterwards too. So Alex, I'm going to let you take this away. Yep. Give me one second. Launch this. And then we'll go back to Zoom. Your screen. There it is. Cool. I think that worked, right? Perfect. Cool. So, uh, I, okay, I click the one. I won't go through the first stuff. That's a presentation I did for uh, NamesCon uh, just a couple of days ago. NamesCon is an interesting conference. It's a it's a domaining conference. So it's people who um, who invest uh, who in, really invest in domains, and it's almost it's almost like real estate. Uh, people buy it, hold it, sell it, lease it. Um, but for them, all of this was super important because um, for domain investing, they really want to be let's look up the slide. For domain investing, they really want to be uh, ahead of the trends and really know all the micro and macro trends going on to really profit off domains. And uh, aside from domains people already own, uh, to to buy new ones and invest in new ones, it's really all about being ahead of the curve. So. Uh, that was the purpose of this presentation, but I think it's it's good information, general information for for almost anyone to to look through, especially um, in today's world where everything is changing so much. Uh, I'll skip the 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 bad one because uh, uh, you already did the intro, but a uh, quick two cents. Uh, Smart Sites, a uh, company I started with my uh, younger brother almost ten years ago now, uh, we're top rated in a bunch of places. Uh, we have uh, 143 full-time employees now, six offices and growing, growing at a good pace. Um, and through, through uh, all the work we do, uh, we live in the digital world. So literally everything digital we do from, from uh, making websites, SEO, pay-per-click. But the goal of that, that we do, we are, we're heavily involved with Google and very, have a very good partnership with Google. And through that, we have a lot of data uh, for which, uh, which, Fuels all the all the charts. I'll I'll be sharing shortly. Uh, before I go through that, just just to give a higher level view. So I think I pulled this the day of the presentation. So even right now, it's only a couple of days old. Uh, so before we jump into the COVID world uh, data, that's mostly U.S. based, just to look at the world view. So in the U.S., we're almost kind of coming out of it. Obviously, you don't know there will be a surge, a second wave, all of that. But generally speaking. We're at the tail end of the the, uh, the big explosion and it's coming down. 
Um, some other countries, not so much. You could see there at the bottom in pink, the European Union, for example, has actually been going up. Uh, India has been going up at a crazy pace. So all this data will be mostly US-based. We just want to be cognizant that uh, every country is in a different place with COVID right now. So uh, we just want to frame that correctly. Exactly. Cool. Uh, even the U.S., so again, the, the, all the data will be U.S.-based, but even looking at the U.S., this is uh, pulled also a couple of days ago. Uh, in dark blue are the states that are reopened. In light blue are the ones that are reopening. For example, like New York, uh, I think indoor dining is going to be allowed end of this month. So there, it's in a process of reopening. Um, then you have the, the beige, uh, light beige is pausing. So those are the ones that are reopened, but now are stopping the reopening plans. And of course, in the, I guess it's an orangey, orangey color, uh, are they reversing? So California, Arizona, Texas, Florida, those, those four states alone make up a huge chunk of the U.S. population. They're actually reversing. So they open and now they're pulling back. So uh, even though, generally speaking, we're getting to a better place uh, with, uh, with uh, COVID and COVID response. Uh, it's still very state specific and it's, it's region specific really. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So all that being said, um, so this is uh, jumping into all the data. Um, a, lot of, um, a lot of clients we work with and a lot of businesses obviously are seeing less, less demand, less uh, um, consumer shopping, but actually from a survey Google did, and this is, was done uh, really at the, at the peak of, of the COVID craziness, just when everything got, started, getting shutting, started shutting down, when there was a lot of panic, 60% um, of the consumers said they're shopping as much uh, or more. Um, so even though all this panic is happening, um, in a lot of sectors of the economy, people are actually not shopping less, they're actually shopping more. And I'll walk you through some more of the data there. So there's definitely a lot of industries that are being hit very hard. Uh, just for us, we work with a lot of small businesses. So off the bat, obviously, travel agents uh, were, were the first to go. Uh, um, companies that do business conferences uh, got hit pretty hard. Uh, restaurants got hit pretty hard. So there's definitely a lot of industries that got hit hard. But at the same time, I'll, I'll walk you through the data of the ones that, that were doing better. Um, very busy chart to look at. Uh, but the, the, main, the main thing you want to look at here is that in pink is uh, our industries that are down a year over year. And in blue are the ones that are up in terms of retail sales. Um, so just eyeballing and you could see across the board almost everything. Uh, looking, looking at the top level like this, almost everything is up except the consumer electronics. And this was... This was the first couple of months of uh, COVID. Um, the other big thing to look for before we jump into the, the industry specific data is that traditional behaviors pretty much went out the window with, with COVID and this still exists uh, on a, in random industries at random points in time. So the, the graph on the left is people searching for do-it-yourself do ideas at literally at 1 a.m. Um, I, I took the scale away because this is a lot of this is proprietary Google data, but um, it literally doubled the amount of people literally at 1 a.m. on their cell phone searching for do-it-yourself ideas. And on the right side, you see searches for toilet paper, which as, as uh, almost everyone knows, people went crazy with in, in the U.S. And search volume for it actually multiplied by, uh, I, I think, increased by a multiple pull of 10,000. Wow. So it's aside from general industry trends, you just got to be cognizant of uh, there's going to be micro industries and sectors that are going to have these crazy behaviors. And they, they still they still do. For example, right now, um, I think w one more time, again, uh, toilet paper and bounty is uh, the search volume jump. And during back to school season, uh, tables, chairs and computers once again jump. For a second time, it jumped for a first time March, April, when people need to work from home. Now, second time when people are doing uh, uh, remote learning. So there's going to be all this weird jumps aside from like general trends. Gotcha. Cool. Jump into a general trend. So this is the uh, all the uh, industries. There's actually more industries, but I focus on the ones that increase, the ones that are seeing more interest and demand. Um, so just from going from the top, fitness had the, the biggest increase. So these are year over year search volume increases. Um, fitness had a huge one, toys and games, food and groceries. And it's interesting. Uh, I think 
independently, if someone asked me to create this list, it would be hard for me to think of all of these. But reading through them, most of them make sense. As people are at home and every single gym in the country is closed, obviously people are searching for in-home fitness. Um, but uh, I don't know, any, any here that surprised you looking at it at this level? What do you think? Yeah, I think the uh, I think food and groceries does mainly because I don't think people used to search for it, right? Yeah. Like if I needed food or groceries, I just went to the grocery store and got it. Um, and and I know Amazon and whatnot is starting to do the deliveries and and all of that. But very interesting to me on that, just because I I don't think at least in my world it's not something that I would have have searched for. I would have just gone and gotten it. So that's pretty cool. And maybe that speaks to how people are going to potentially be getting food and groceries in the future. Um, yeah. uh, I, I guess another thing too is in, in our world, IT, we know computers have gone through the roof and we actually had, yeah. it'd be interesting to get your, your search data on computers, mainly because back in uh, January 14th, 2020, um, Microsoft stated that Windows 7 would no longer be supported. And it took a ton of people to the last <laughs> second to start to do that. So we already, already saw a huge increase in um, the, the chips, uh, the Intel chips versus AMD chips and laptops or computers with that. So interesting to see maybe the spike in January on computers and then again in COVID times. And we've seen it where we, it, you know, you're waiting on hardware to get to yeah. customers for a very long time. And uh, interesting enough, too, my father runs an electronic recycling business here in New Jersey, and the, he mentions that he, he recycles, reuses, and fix up older laptops and resells them. And the same laptop that would have used would have sold for $120 back in last year in 2019 is now selling for $220 in 2020. Um, so yeah, just interesting things that I've been a, a part of as well. It's, it's been a, yeah, for, in the computer space, it's been a crazy market. I know for, for our company, um, I purchased, uh, like you said, I, we, we, we purchased a lot of computer equipment just for, for our employees, right? Just, just for, for office use, especially as we're, we're in generally, we're a growing company. We double in size, uh, every year almost. So yeah. always a lot of new computers and stuff we're getting. So, uh, in January, for sure, like you're saying, we, we had a delay and, uh, we ordered from Dell. So Dell usually is, has good inventory levels and good foresight into this stuff. Uh, so in January we had a delay, a couple of things I ordered were back ordered and took a while to come. But, but then when COVID hit, it got really, really bad. We had, I remember trying to buy laptops for some of our staff and it was, uh, it was like, I think back order like eight weeks or yeah. something crazy like that. Yeah. And then again, now uh, literally a couple of weeks ago, I put in another order and I just got a notification from Dell that's got pushed back four weeks. Yeah. Uh, and, and you would think they had like the entire summer to prepare, right? And th this time it's not new that the, the increase in demand, people were expecting the back to school season to have increased demand, but just so much more than anyone anticipated because I think a lot of people realize they're going to have to work from home more for, they're not going back to work yet. Uh, a lot of people are kind of making do with the computers they had. Uh, they, their thought was maybe August, September, we'll go back to work. Schools will reopen, we'll go back to work. Obviously, that didn't happen in most states in the U.S. Um, and then the whole back to school thing. Uh, even even my school here for my kids in New Jersey, up until two weeks ago, they were telling us it's going to be in-person learning. And then last second, they said they don't have the resources and it's going to be virtual for a couple of weeks. Well, virtual for a couple of weeks, I need to get computers for my kids, right? I need to yeah. set up like a, and not just computers, I need to get like a mouse, keyboard, and then it just all adds up. Um, I think looking at it at a micro level, it, there's, there's uh, amongst the whole industry jumping, uh, there's been like products that just took like a huge jump, like webcams, webcams, for example, like a web camera. I think to this day, if you try to buy like a Logitech, like a brand name web camera, I don't think you're going to be able to. Yeah. I think, I think there, they've been maybe 2021, you'll be able to, to, to get one. Uh, it's, it's been crazy. It's been yeah, crazy. I completely agree. And we're seeing all of that, those same trends here too. Um, the one that makes me the most hopeful on here is fitness. Um, and, and I Jump hope, you know, it, whether, you know, people, whether it's people for the first time getting into it or it's people that have been going to gyms and, and they've been closing up. But I, I'm really hopeful that, um, you know, what I'm concerned about in, in America specifically is I already think there was some sort of an, a mental health 
uh, crisis, we were starting to come to the fr uh, fruition of understanding anxiety, depression, and whatnot. And it's my personal opinion that fitness is one of those things that can really move the needle for people. At, at least it does it for me. Um, and I, I'm sure. really hoping that people start to get into fitness more and um, what I'm scared about is because of quarantine, people are staying more and more home, they're setting back, yeah. and they're not getting out and about, you know, breathing in the air, going for walks, basic things that will help with mental health and, and even obesity and, and weight and things like that. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I think, uh, to some extent, the last couple of months, uh, luckily, have been spring and summer. So uh, I it hasn't been as bad in a lot of places. Obviously, New York City is tougher to go out for a walk and things like that. But generally speaking, with nicer weather, it hasn't been as bad. But now as we roll into the fall and winter, I think there's going to be a lot more of those issues. And it's just tough uh, uh, with everyone being secluded. People are, are used to social interactions, right? Just yeah. Completely take that away from them. And then on top of it, it's going to be cold outside. No one's going to go out. I, I think for sure it's going to be tough. Uh, so this is the breakdown for fitness. Uh, so quarantining at home, uh, uh, Americans are setting up make, make home gyms, which makes sense. Uh, toys and games is interesting. So toys and games, uh, not only is it, is it up a good amount year over year as people search for games to do with their kids as, as they're staying at home more, um, you could see the spikes on the weekends, which, which is interesting. So people obviously uh, – aren't planning enough into the future. Literally on Saturday, they're like, crap, I wish I had a board game to play with my kids. And that's when they're searching in, um, literally when, when they, when they want to do it. But yeah, that it's been up across the board, party games, board games, um, video games and VR is also, uh, VR has been kind of slowing down a little bit, but now it's, it's, uh, it's uh, picking up again. Yeah. Alex, anything on uh, your kids specifically that you guys started to get into that maybe you wouldn't have gotten into prior to COVID? Oh, geez. It's been tough. So it's, uh, we've bought them a lot more. So my, my kids are five and six, about to be six and seven in, in, in a year. Um, we got them a lot more just puzzles and games and stuff, just things to do just from them sitting at home. Uh, but on top of that, they, they used to do a lot of activities. Uh, they, they would do like gymnastics and dance and uh, all the, not having that has been tough. Uh, we 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 built them like a mini gym in the in the basement and got like gymnastics man, and we're just trying to trying to like compensate for all these activities that they used to do just that aren't. Some are starting to come back, but I mean some some really won't or won't come back in the same way. Like virtual virtual gymnastics is just not the same. And I give I give all these companies credit that they, they all. They're all trying to do virtual dance and virtual gymnastics, but for like a five and six year old doing virtual dance is, is, is yeah, tough. Completely <laughs> agree. Yeah. The number one purchase in our house went to puzzles. Uh, yes. <laughs> everybody yeah. started, we got puzzles based on Adrian and actually my wife uh, really, she's like, I used to do puzzles all the time and, and we haven't done them. And now she's getting a lot of, uh, really into them. Uh, the other thing, That's as funny. you mentioned, like dance or gymnastics, my son, uh, he actually just had his first jujitsu lesson in probably six, seven months now. So in person, uh, it, it's yeah, in person, it's, it's coming back, but it's, okay. you know, it's a delicate balance. You're signing waivers, all this kind of stuff. And, yeah. you know, I feel a feel for them. Like they, they still have to run a business. They have to do things and they know this, there's a certain way to do it and a certain way not to do it. And, uh, you're, you're right. It's, it connects. It's, it's really based on age and where people are at. Yeah. Uh, next one is the food one you were, you were uh, asking about before. So on top of uh, grocery searches, a lot of people are searching for uh, baking ingredients and how to actually bake things as restaurants closed. Yeah. Uh, a lot more people might, it might be a good thing. I think just, just traveling around, I think the U S is at least feels to me a lot more restaurant dependent than, than Europe and Asia or South America. So it, it seems like that's swinging back with a lot more people now looking for how to cook at home, uh, same time, you know, prepared foods and everything. But across the board, food, food stuff uh, went up, everything except weight loss food, which went the other direction. That's interesting. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, priorities, priorities. <laughs> yeah. Um, computer. So this is a good one. This is super relevant to you. Um, so this is a year over year computer searches, uh, computer accessories was the biggest increase. Uh, so that's, that's a uh, webcam, mice, uh, keyboards, uh, things like that, followed by gaming computers and laptops. 
So, kind any of any here thing. any here that seem seems weird to you, or it's pretty much in line? Have you? I guess from the stuff you do, have you seen a higher increase in laptops and desktops, for example? Yeah, that, that's where I was going to go with this one. Laptops is up 62% versus desktops at 37. And uh, that's what we've seen, ex- especially with the need to move remote. You had a lot of employees that were uh, maybe they, they only did their job when they came into the office. So a desktop computer at probably a ha- half of about the price of a, a the similar type of laptop maybe uh, so you would, you would see companies invest more in those for individuals that were more stationary. Uh, and obviously quickly that changed and people needed to be, be able to do things uh, both ways. So I think laptops are there. Interesting though, on desktops, we actually had this come up in our company. I don't know if you have had this come up in your company, but uh, as people are leaving specifically New Jersey, that's where we're located as well. Yep. We've had a couple employees that have asked us like, Hey, now that we're fully remote, um, is it okay if I move to another state? And the answer is, yeah, absolutely. Um, And and we're starting to consider a lot more of that and even bringing on people in all different types of regions across the country. But one of those things came up for us is like, instead of getting this individual laptop um, and maybe moving from working at home to also coming to the office on a varied schedule, now they're going to be in another state and they're just going to be in one location. Maybe now we can invest in a desktop computer setup because it's not going to be moving all over the place. So I, I think laptops yeah. for people that are moving around a lot is still going to be the primary, uh, but it'll be interesting yeah. to see if desktops come around as people become more stationary. Yeah, no, very good point. We, we, we haven't had employees in, in our local employees uh, ask to move, although that might very well come. Uh, but we've started hiring more employees in different states where we don't physically have an office. For, for yeah. example, they, they'll always re- remain a work from home type of employee. Uh, but even in those cases, I, you know what, I've considered desktops, but it's a lot harder to uh, to ship back and forth. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, uh, monitors involved and stuff like that. But for sure, um, at some point, people become more stationary right now. It's everyone, everyone's focused on on having them ability. Yeah. And, and I don't know if it was included in this search, but another interesting thing would be the cloud and the cloud was already gaining traction and how people and businesses would utilize it. Uh, And you had the old school businesses. I'll use like an attorney, a law firm, for example, that was very focused on where and how they were going to do things. Uh, But more and more times we're even getting smaller and smaller organizations that want to consider the cloud in one form or another. And uh, we haven't fully gotten to where the cloud, uh, the the cloud in terms of pricing, whether it's AWS or Microsoft Azure or Google or whatnot, it's still very varied in terms of the pricing and complexity of that from what we see. Um, But it'll be interesting to see how companies continue to move probably more aggressively in that direction. And then what we see after that is what are the devices needed to connect to the cloud environment to perform my job activities? Um, yeah. Some people like, especially in your world with the marketing and whether it's video or production or something, still going to need a pretty powerful device to do that. Um, but as people that have just standard, I go to these, all these different SaaS applications to do my daily jobs and maybe a shared network drive. Um, the cloud's going to make more and more sense. Yeah, absolutely. So all of this data is retail search. So it didn't have B2B stuff like that, but absolutely cloud cloud has been increasing from, from the other presentations I've seen about it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, house and garden. So the, the, the rest are all not, not as interesting, but, but I'll go through them just to give everyone that uh, some context and cool data. Uh, household supplies. And this is, this is the toilet paper and, uh, and all of that. What's interesting is consumption really has an increase, right? For, or I guess toilet paper, you could say you're more at home versus the office, but really household supplies, consumption, Windex, things like that, the US-wide consumption hasn't really increased, but uh, the, the amount of uh, sales and the amount of searches for it has increased a good amount. And, uh, interesting to see. It's uh, obviously panic mode, right? Uh, the- yeah. <laughs> people are afraid they're going to run out of toilet paper. It's just so funny to me that that's what we panicked about. <laughs> I, just, I still It wasn't don't... food. F- food jumped up, I think, like 50%. The toilet paper is up like 10,000%. Yeah, it just like, doesn't make sense to me, but I get it. 
pet med pet medicine and overall pet stuff is up. Uh, anything related to pets is up. People are, I think, are home more and just spending more money on their pets. But really, everything pet related is up. Yeah, I saw a, a couple interesting articles around how your animals at home are going to love the time and attention, but then yeah. once you go back, it's gonna you're gonna have to they're gonna have to deal with that as well. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is appliances, uh, similar, I think, to uh, just general stay at home situation, small appliances, microwaves, freezers, um, bread makers, it, it not not only is it up, but it's literally an by far all time high, more people are searching for small appliances for their kitchen than ever in the history of tracked Google searches. That's insane. I have a real life story on this one not too long ago, <laughs> probably two weeks worth of uh, two weeks ago, a, a data point on this. We had a extra uh, deep freezer that my, uh, mm -hmm. my brother bought for my wife uh, when she was pregnant with our first son to store milk and everything like that. And uh, I think it goes brand new for $150. And um, he was born five years ago. He's five. So it's, it was probably purchased between five and six years ago. She listed it on the Facebook marketplace because she was bored. <laughs> and within two hours, she had 35 requests for, to, to purchase that from her at $100. So literally a fifty dollar sure. <laughs> drop off from they're still listed for a one fifty right you can get them yeah new, but literally thirty five requests within two hours to purchase that I, I've seen that with we listed some old sofas uh, similarly kids are a little older now so we we're moving things around um, similar similar situation like, like thirty something messages like selling at the same price they originally bought it for as I think uh, a lot not a lot but many colleges. Um, are going virtual. So uh, college students have to stay at home with their parents. So the parents are like buying them sofas and couches and stuff. So similar, I listed it and like checked my phone like two hours later, like 30 messages. <laughs> yeah. Very, very weird times. Uh, VR headsets uh, was, it was a big increase. So this is for consumer electronics, virtual VR headsets was the biggest jump. Um, Oculus is actually coming out with their, second generation of the original one. So that, that's going to be interesting to see if it drives anything. But for a while, and you can even see the left side of the, the graph, the, the blue line, but even going back to last year, VR has been kind of flat. It, it went up a lot when uh, Oculus came out originally, obviously, um, when, when their mobile unit came out, it blipped a little bit. Uh, but it's been increasing a lot more as, as people and, and uh, I guess high school kids, college kids spend more time at home. Yeah. Those things are, are pretty cool. We had an engineer on our team who brought one in uh, last year. We had Friday lunches yeah. in the office and uh, we have a big uh, a projector and whatnot that shoots out onto our multi-purpose rooms, you know, large yeah. uh, wall and all of that. And, uh, you know, everyone would try it on, do it, and you could see what they were seeing on the thing. It was super cool, very entertaining. Yeah, cool. I, I, have, I have one here. I, I always try to be like, on, where did I put it? On top of all the all the trends. So I got it. I got it just, just as it came out, but it's kind of, it's like one of those things, unless you have a lot of time and do a lot of gaming. There you go. Yeah. Um, it's, it's cool. It's really cool to show people. It's really cool. Like even uh, I really enjoyed showing it to like my, my grandma and like my older people, like, uh, like things, even like the, the, I think Google earth they have. So like 3d maps, you like literally see it's really, really cool for them. So it's really cool to show people um, the gaming in it is kind of cool, but ultimately I can't really say I use it much, but yeah, the technology is really cool. I really think there's a lot of potential for technology. Agreed. Cool. Uh, sporting goods. Uh, we kind of talked about it in the home gym stuff, but same thing. Uh, bicycle, skateboarding, basketball equipment, anything really for people to spend time doing any kind exactly. of activities. Um, home improvement was, it was a big one too. It spiked a lot more later on the, this data ends a couple months ago. Um, Literally, people are at home more, so they're spending more time on their house. Um, even uh, we're trying to do some improvements on our house here as well. All the contractors are like booked out like six months in. So <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's, uh, and it's, it's, it's just such a disconnect too, because we, uh, uh, in my role, I work with a lot of, uh, personally work with a lot of SMBs who are really suffering. I see their like restaurants. Uh, a lot of industries are. And then on the flip side, you have other industries that are just doing amazing. So it's really, it's created such a, such a big disconnect. 
Yeah, you're uh, so right. My uh, my next door neighbor owns a pool company, and he's in his tenth or eleventh uh, oh. season. And he said that um, the last time this spiked for him was post nine yeah, eleven. I heard the same. I heard the same thing from a pool guy. Yeah. 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 Is is everybody investing in in staying home, staying close, not no. traveling? And uh, he he his season has. It, it, he 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 works you know 14 16 hour days with no breaks and uh and his guys are busy as all hell and it, it, to, to your point it, there is positive in that you know i see some of his employees being able to go out and purchase homes and stuff like that in in terms of like a labor job where you wouldn't typically see um the, the ability or even uh the the market to go and do that and because of the industry and what they're doing and their w-2s and everything like that you're seeing more and more people in that area be able to go and do other things too so yeah. interesting uh office stuff so, so same thing as computers desks uh, chairs uh, so uh, this this that again is a couple of months old but spiked again now a couple of weeks ago back to school all the exact items spiked again yeah. um and it's funny uh, uh, you almost think people would have foresight to buy this for their kids going into the school year earlier, but in situations like mine, which I'm sure a lot of people are in, it was supposed to be uh, in-person school. So we didn't even think about that. We're going to need two desks, right? Two chairs, yeah. uh, all this stuff until the last second. And then trying to buy a, a desk right now, even, even companies that are known to stock inventory very well, like Ikea, you go to their website and try to look up desks right now, every single thing is sold out in every single store. So uh, it's, it's, it's interesting that uh, such huge spikes uh, that are happening. Agreed. Um, that was the last one. Um, so again, I'll go to the beginning to show all of the categories. So there, there's more that were, that were negative. I didn't really go into the, to the negative, uh, but just really quick, auto parts uh, was down, starting to come back up. In general, auto was down as people are at home and not using their cars. And dealerships were closed. The dealerships finally reopened. Uh, sales actually went up really well. Now the problems dealerships have is they have no inventory because okay. uh, a lot of the factories were closed for COVID and then the European factories closed in the summer. So they're having their own issues. Uh, so auto parts is back up now, but still down is jewelry, footwear, apparel, and accessories, which kind of makes sense with people home and not going out as much. They're reprioritizing from jewelry purchases to toilet paper purchases. <laughs> <laughs> So Alex, I wanted to ask you about the the trend in your own company about yeah. companies focusing uh, really on their digital experience, starting with their website, going to paid advertisements and, and grabbing, if they're in these industries, a portion of that, kind of making that transition. Say they were a an older school, let's call it like a bicycle shop. And then going to, or at least trying to get to a more where they didn't really maybe need to focus on their digital presence. And then have you seen any spikes in organizations like that or companies like that, uh, where all of a sudden it's, I need a better website. I need it to be mobile friendly. I need to have the people be able to book appointments or give me a call or find me on Google or even purchase something through my website, which they were never able to do, but I've had to transition to that. What have you, what overall over the last six months, what have you seen there? Yeah. So very good question. So we've seen, we've seen some of that, but not as, not as much as you think. Uh, and you, you summarize it really well. I think all of those kind of uh, feelings and requests are going to come down the, the pipeline. Um, I think generally speaking, it, if we weren't already heading towards a digitally focused uh, country and world, uh, this will nudge it more so in that direction. And because of that, as a company, uh, during all of this, we didn't lay off any employees. We still have or, or increased employees. I think we started uh, pre-COVID at 135. Now we have 143. Um, even though we, we lost money for, for a lot of months, uh, March, April, May, we lost tons of money. Uh, and the idea is that we're really investing to, in the future where I think, uh, like you said, more and more companies are going to realize that you really have to have a digital presence in, in, in this day and age. Um, give you an example. We have, a, we have a local butcher who literally just a butcher store and there's not a lot of those left. Yeah. They go in there and you buy like your steak and stuff, right? Um, 
he wasn't really allowed to sell or first of all, the people weren't allowed inside for a long time. So he had to pivot and he started doing, first he started doing local deliveries, uh, no online ordering, nothing. Literally on his website was just a menu. You would call him up. If he was by his phone, he would pick up and then he would uh, drive to your house and drop it off. Uh, but even even businesses like that are going to pivot now into digital. They, they understand the importance of it. Even if everything, even if there's a vaccine and everyone gets a vaccine and everything reopens, I think a lot of these uh, places will realize that they really need to have a website. They really need to be doing online marketing. Um, I think a lot of stores that were traditionally in malls and didn't even have a website now with mall traffic and down, even if things reopen, mall traffic is going to be down, foot traffic. So I, I think uh, generally speaking in the long term, I think it, it's, it showed to people how important it is to have a digital presence and to be able to not purely rely on foot traffic in, in retail. Uh, E-commerce in general is doing really, really well, as, as you could see probably looking at Amazon stock and uh, their, their sales figures. Um, the, the only thing I'll add is all of this is not immediate. I think generally speaking, a lot of businesses are still suffering financially. So like the bike, bicycle shop you gave in his example, even if he realizes that he should make a website and uh, start doing online marketing, uh, his business is probably down 50, 75% year over year now. So he's not going to be making huge investments. Um, so I think in the long term, for sure, all these places will be. Right now, everyone's kind of playing it by ear. Um, I think uh, in the past where uh, a lot more people would sign longer term commitments with us for a year, two years, three years. Uh, now, no one knows what's going to happen in three months. So yeah. all of those out uh, making huge website projects. Like if you want a custom Magenta website, e-commerce website with live market pricing and all this stuff, it's, it's a huge financial commitment. It's a huge timeline. It's six to nine months, maybe six to 12 months. Um, people are, are very conservative now with all of that, A, because no one knows which way COVID's going, B, because of the election. Um, so I think in a couple of months, this will all shake out and, and there will be a lot more demand. And because of that, we're literally staffing up to, to be ready for it. But uh, for the time being, um, Time being, it's tough for, for small businesses, for the SMB guys, depending on the industry you're, you're in, of course. But I would say probably close to 20% of our SMB clients have, have gone out of business. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, another, if another 20% uh, follow suit in the next, next couple of months. Um, and some of it's more voluntary, right? Someone ran a restaurant for 50 years. They're, they're like, this is a good time to exit. Like, I'm, I'm done. Uh, in some cases, the industry just disappear, right? And if, if, you're, if you're a travel agent for, for cruises, um, you're, you're going to be out of a job for a little while now. Or if you do, we have, a, I know a lot of companies who are involved with live events, whether, whether ticketing, setting up the events, actually uh, making the conferences. Uh, there's a whole industry around event, live events. And under live events, I would encompass uh, music events, performances, or even like, like Broadway, right? Broadway shut down. Uh, so there, there's a lot of things that unfortunately are going to take a while to come back. But I think generally speaking, it, all of this will push, uh, push the importance of digital. Um, and at the very least, it will push a lot of traditional businesses some who maybe have held out not to, not doing digital because they're doing okay. Uh, some just because retail foot traffic is all they've ever known. But I think it'll push a lot of these businesses to realize that they really should diversify. And if you were if you were a store that was traditionally just in malls and only got sales from retail foot traffic, uh, first of all, now you're probably out of business. But looking forward, you really start thinking that you need to diversify how, how you do sales. So I think generally speaking, more and more will go digital. I think uh, more and more people will focus on their website. People who have had, who have a website from 10 years ago will understand it's important to update it, right? Yeah. Um, uh, marketing, I think, will become more important as well uh, digitally uh, as, as obviously more and more people now spend their time on, on computers, cell phones. That was going up as it was. Uh, but now it's going up even more. So I think that all of that's going to become much more important. Awesome. Alex, thank you so much for your time presenting yeah, all this you. data to us, giving us these trends uh, from behind the scenes as a premier Google agency. 
And uh, once again, congratulations on the Inc. 5000 for multiple years in a row now. Uh, thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you.